chapter one. So let's see what we can get with chapter one. Is there anything? Let's see. What do I do with number one for chapter one? What do you guys think you got to do to that one? I do it as I put negative three three times, and then I just distribute through it. Yeah. So negative three to the fifth power. Now that's a negative three to the fifth power. The next one's a negative three to the third power. What makes these two different? Yeah, one's in parentheses, one's not. So if we have it inside of parentheses, that means that this whole base is raised to the fifth. If it's not inside parentheses, only the three is raised to the third power. Be careful with those because you'll probably see one like that on your exam. Okay? So be real careful in making sure you watch out for your parentheses. Since both of these are odd, your exponents, they will both come out negative. But if this would have been a 2 right here, this answer would have been a negative 9, okay? But it's a negative 27 is the right answer for that one. And then what was the answer for number 1? Yeah, okay. So you got your, your differences with those. All right, continuing on. Are we okay with the next two? Order of operations. Yes. Good with those? Okay. Work from left to right, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Left to right all your way through. What do I do? What do I do first in order of operations? First thing is? Parentheses. Parentheses, parentheses. yes. Does this count as that parenthesis no. part we're working? No. no, because there's no math inside it. So you have to have math inside of it in order to do that. So make sure that you have your math part in there um, to work that one out. Uh, number five. What about that one? You go with that one? Okay. Distribute, then combine anything you can combine in there. Do we need to go through that one? Are you okay? Okay. You're good? Okay. All right. Next one, same thing as the top one. Just got another X to combine in there and put together. Um, seven is evaluate. So in seven, we need to plug numbers in for our letters. Good with that one? Yes. Yes? <laughs> and also number eight, same thing. <clears throat> number nine, you need to solve for you. This gets into the algebraic equations where we had to solve for a letter. Good with that one? Yes. Okay. And what about the next one? Number ten. It's got stuff on both sides, so you got to kind of combine some things together and then get your Z by itself yes. and solve for it. Mm -hmm. Good on eleven. Eleven is kind of to me okay. Zero. Well, let's let's figure out eleven. X plus two equals a negative two x plus two. So if I solve this one, I need to get my x's together, so I'm going to add two x. So that gives me ten x plus two is equal to two. Subtract two from both sides and I get ten x is equal to zero. Now you can divide here by 10 because you're taking 0 and dividing it by 10. If this would have been switched and it would have been 10 divided by 0, then I couldn't do it. But this way I can. The only thing I have is that it equals 0. Okay, okay. so I just flip my answer and then it's what confused me. Okay, yeah. Don't flip this part because then it would be undefined. But because you're dividing by 10, you can and get 0 out of that. Okay. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, so that was number 11. What about 12? You okay with that one or you need to do that one? 12 good. 12's good? All of you? Let's no. No? You want 12? Yeah, please. Okay. <clears throat> number 12, 2.7 times x minus 8 is equal to a negative 2.7 times x plus 1.5. <clears throat> so we got some calculator stuff to do here. 2.7 times x is 2.7x. Negative 8 times 2.7. So I need my calculator <clears throat> to do that one. Yep, because you take 2.7 times 8. Whoops, 8, not 9. <clears throat> and I get 21.6, negative. Negative 2.7 times that is a negative 2.7x. Negative 2.7 times 1.5. 
Yep. <clears throat> and it's going to be a negative 4.05. You need that sign, remember? I must both signs. Good sign. Yep. Okay, now I need to get everybody together. So I need to add 2.7x to both sides. That gives me 4, 5.4x uh, minus 21.6 is equal to a negative 4.05. Then I'm going to add 21.6, gives me 5.4x, those are gone, and 21.6 minus 4.5, gives me 17.55, <clears throat> and then divide by 5.4. This is just a good one to your calculator you need with this one. And we find out that x is equal to 3.25. <clears throat> now you can check these by plugging that back into here and seeing if both sides end up matching. So uh, it is solvable at that standpoint. Okay. All right. So that was 12. Is that better now? Signs, 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 signs. Okay, so that was 12. And um, continuing on, chapter 2 is the next one. So, um, number 13. <clears throat> Set up an equation for the following word problem and solve the equation. Let y be the unknown number. <clears throat> so, what's the equation going to be with this thing? So it says 34 <clears throat> times a number. So what does that mean? 34, uh, whatever letter you <clears throat> X, okay. Um, it says let Y, so I gotta let Y be the unknown. Because <clears throat> it told me. <clears throat> Minus 61 is, what's is mean? Equals. Yep, and they said is equal to negative uh, 83. So that's my equation. So that's step one. It's you y, the y. Yeah, because there's a y there. It confused me too. It Thirty-four less than a times a number minus sixty-one. Oh, less than the number. Oh, yeah. yep. Um, so, so really, I need to have y minus a negative eighty-three. Yep, I didn't read far enough. And then you just Thank you. Which makes it a positive. Yep. Yep. So really, the full-fledged equation in there is 34y minus 61 is equal to y plus 83. Yeah, okay. All right, so we got that part. And step two, it says solve the equation for y. Are you guys okay with that? Yep. Or do you need to do it? We're good or not good? All you gotta say is you're not good, and we'll go through it. So just let me know. And when we're good, all right. 14, set up the equation for the following problem. Let y be the unknown number. So if a number divided by 4, so what does that mean? Y, y over 4, over four. Mm -hmm. is increased by 69. So what's that mean? Uh-huh. The result is 80. Okay, we're good there? Okay, can you solve that one? Yeah, we well, might as well finish it. End up with 11 equals y over 4. Times all sides by 4. So I have y over 4 times 4 equals 11 times 4. So y ends up equaling 44. So we're good? So y equals 44? Okay. 15, the sum of three consecutive integers is a negative 87. What's that going to mean? What would we do with 15? Three numbers in a row mm -hmm. equal up to eight, negative Okay, seven. but what are they going to be if I don't know what any of them are? My first number is x. What's the second number? x plus 1. Mm -hmm. And what's the third one? x plus 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was that? I took the number and <laughs> get the middle, get the middle and work it back. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
It is. It is, yeah. Because if you do divide that by 3, then you get your center number, uh -huh. this number here. And so you subtract 1, and you add 1, and you get it there. Yep. Yep. So if we do it the right way, <laughs> x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 is equal to a negative 87, then you can finish it from there, right? I think so. Um, same with 16. 16 is just like it. So you've got your consecutive numbers in there. And I don't know why I've got, oh, I got 17 written out because I think we had one that somebody questioned is the wrong answer in that one. And we worked it out um, in there. It says the sum of three angles of a triangle is 180. One or two of the angles uh, measure 12 and 74. What is the measure of the third angle? And so it's 12 plus 74 plus x equals 180. Yep, and so we got our stuff there too. 18? Can you do that one? No, let's go over <clears throat> Let's go over 18. Okay. <clears throat> All of these starry ones? Yeah. All right. The distance to a boat ramp less the distance Chris has already traveled is 10 miles. If the distance to the boat ramp is 42, how many miles did Chris already travel? So, so notice the first part. So distance to the boat ramp less how far Chris walked is going to equal 10 miles. So that one's kind of pretty much straightforward. So 42 minus x equals 10 is my equation. And then 2 is to solve it. So minus 42 um, gives me a negative x is equal to a negative 32. Then divide by negative 1 and find out that x is really equal to 32 miles. So Chris has already um, got the distance of 32 miles out of the way. Could it be x minus 10 equals 42? No, it would have to be x plus 10 equals 42 if you do it that way. <laughs> because it's the 10 plus how far he's already, the distance he's traveled will equal 42. So it would have to have been x plus 10 mm -hmm. equals 42 mm -hmm. if you set it that direction. Mm -hmm. You don't want to subtract 10 because it's not, he's not going 10 miles beyond the point, he's just getting to the exact point. Uh, 19. <clears throat> it says, in a two candidate election, Anita received five times as many votes as Robert. If the total of 36 votes were cast, how many votes did Robert receive? So if Anita received five times as many, so that would end up being 5x plus x, plus x equals 36. Yep. And so I get 6x equals 36. Divide by 6, x equals 6. And that's what Robert received was 6 votes. So we've got what he has in there. Okay. Um, 20. Can you do that one? Yes? Can you do 21? Yeah, it's kind of like the boat, like the uh, one we just did. So it would be two times um, for Kyle, and um, Susan is one. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So that one's not bad. Um, 22? 22? Yeah, I have it circled, but I can't remember why. Circled marked, marked at half so. price, less the dealer's discount of $2.50. <clears throat> the CD-ROM cost $3.50. How much was the original price of the CD-ROM? <clears throat> so what do we have? X divided by 2 minus 2.50 equals 3.50. Marked at half price less, yep, yeah, minus two fifty. <clears throat> and it equals three fifty. Mm hmm For some reason I don't know how it got how the answer was twelve, maybe that's what it was. Oh, because when you move the three sixty three or the when you have X over two minus two fifty equals three fifty, I need to add two fifty to both sides. Okay. <clears throat> That gives me x over 2 is equal to 0, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
six dollars. To get rid of the two, I need to multiply everybody by two. So then those cancel. Two times six is twelve. <clears throat> yep. Okay. That's how they got so it. Was right when I figured it out yep. First part of it. Okay. <laughs> how about thirty-three yeah, or twenty-three? Sorry. I should say. Property tax on a boat is five thousand four hundred forty-one dollars. Let's go over that. What was the tax rate if the boat was valued at two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars? Round your answer to the nearest hundredth of a percent. Five four four one. What was this? Yes. Divided by the two six five zero zero zero. Two point zero. Two point yeah. Two point zero five percent. Okay. Yep. You can do it that way. <laughs> that looks like a wonderful one. <laughs> or you could also set this one up as being two hundred and sixty five. Thousand times x is equal to five four four one, and you get the exact same answer. But you got to move it back because you're looking for a rate, so you have to change it. Yep, you can do it as a proportion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Proportion works out well because um, you would have the two sixty five. Whoops, two six five comma zero 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 um, as your base. Yeah, let me get it right here. Yeah. Go to that sheet. You know the sheet. <laughs> so if you set this one, let me let me get this one set up as a proportion first, since we talked about it. I'd have five four four one over two six five comma zero 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 is equal to x over one hundred would have been the proportion way of doing that one. So now we can move on to twenty four. 24, it says a student missed 12 problems on the biology test and received a grade of 73. If all the problems were of equal value, how many problems were on the test? Round off your answer to the nearest integer. So you would take 12 divided by 100, right? 12 divided by 100? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, you go 12 divided by 100. Okay, so you can you said put twelve over a hundred. No. No? That doesn't sound right. You take the three percent and minus the seventy three percent it comes to twenty seven percent. Yeah. So you take the twelve over the twenty seven percent. Yes. Because you have to go back and you've got to figure out what your the prop twelve problems were worth. So you need to take one hundred minus seventy three, which ends up leaving you twenty seven percent. That's what your 12 problems are worth. You missed 27% of the test. <clears throat> so then what you can do with that is set your 12 problems over x, because we don't know how many problems are on the test, and that's going to equal 27 over 100. And then you can do it as a proportion that way. Um, so then it's 12 times 100 divided by 27, and that gives you how many problems? 44. 44. <coughs> Okay, get 44 questions with that one. And then um, 25, 25 has got three parts to it. The discount on a new copier is $190. This was a discount of 23%. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. What is the original price of the copier? Okay, the discount on the copier. So you don't know what the price is. The price is going to be X. Yes. Know what the discount is, so it's going to equal one ninety. Yeah. But what do I got to do to get that discount off of this x? I know the discount's twenty three, so the minus zero point two three x. Yep. You minus it. Yep, because it's a discount. You wouldn't add it if it's added. It's an increase of twenty three percent. It's a discount in this case, so I'm going to subtract it from it. <coughs> And that leaves me with 77% or 77x or 77.x equals 190. Divide 190 by 77 or 0.77, <clears throat> and you'll get the original price. So what's the original price? 
What was it again? 826.09. 826.09. But you got the same answer? I, well, I think I got the same answer, but I took the 190, uh -huh. 0.23, mm -hmm. and divided them, and got 826.09. I don't think you would. I did. <laughs> I don't know how you did, but anyway. You take the okay. 190, and then you hit divide, and you hit 1.23, you get 826.09. Hmm. I don't know how you manage that one. <laughs> So what's the sales price if we figure this whole thing out? So now I gotta take eight twenty six point zero nine. Can you minus one ninety right? Yeah. That's how I did that part. Minus one ninety. <laughs> that you did right. <laughs> six thirty six oh nine. Yes. And then said, what would the customer pay for the copier if a six percent sales tax is added to the sales price? So all I gotta do is take that answer and times it by point zero six. That's going to give me the tax, which is $38.17, and add it to it. And that will give me my full price. Now, do they want to add it to the 826.09 or? No, no, no. They want it added to your discounted price. You don't pay tax on the $826 because you got it discounted by $190. So you only pay tax on what you pay. You don't pay it back to the original price. So you pay taxes on? Six point three six. Six six hundred thirty six dollars nine cents is what you pay taxes on. Okay, and that just times that by. Yep. Six three six point zero nine. Yep. Add it to it, and so you walk out the door paying six hundred seventy four dollars and twenty six cents. Could you just times by one point zero six? Yes. Mm -hmm. and then you wouldn't, then have, you wouldn't to have to add, add it again, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can do that. All right, now we're on to chapter three. There's two questions in here that you do not have the problems for because it decided to leave them off. And that is number 26 you need to solve for R right here. So solve for R. R is what we have with that one. So if I solve for R, I'm going to divide this by PT, both of them. And I find I over PT is equal to R. Yep. yep. So that gives me my value in there. All right? Okay. And then 27, that's the other one they left off everything on. In 27, it originally was a negative 4 minus 9Y is equal to 14. Yep, and that's not right because there needs to be an x right here. Negative 4x minus 9y equals 14 is, I think, what we have. Now we're solving for x, so how do I get x by itself? Put that on Keith's paper over here. 5 by 4. Add the 9. Oh, yeah. Yep, add 9y. Gives me negative 4x equals 9y plus 14. Then divide by negative 4 each piece or over the whole thing. And find out x is equal to 9y plus 14 divided by a negative 4. And I think that's what they give you. 27. When I changed the practice final, it wasn't like me because I was trying to do a nine y over negative four and then a fourteen over, and it wasn't. I was trying. Yes, I it won't right. tell you. It won't. It won't let you put it in there because of this negative four. So you have to go through and change your sign. So it's negative y minus fourteen all over four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. trying. That yeah. was the reason it wouldn't let you. Now, if you take your exam and you give me this, I will be okay with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to put your? You're supposed to be paying attention and not I doing your. Yeah, right. Oh, Marcel, can you put that up for like one second? Sure. Sorry. That's fine. Sorry, sorry. No, you're okay. All right, thank you. Okay. So that's 27. You okay at 28? No. 28. Yeah. You use your formula. It says find the volume of a right cylinder cone with a radius of 13, a height of 14. Um, take the value as a 
value of pi, there should be a pi symbol in here, is 3.14. Round off your answer to the nearest thousandth. So, I need the formula. And the formula happens to be um, volume equals pi r squared times the height, but because it's a cone, I need to take one-third of that because I've got to divide it by one-third or multiply it by one-third or divide it by three. So if I put all that on my calculator, what will I have? I will have 3.14 times my radius, which is 13 squared, times my height, which is 14. Get that answer, divide it by three, and my final answer is two, four, seven, six, and it says round to the nearest thousandth, so that's where the three's at, so I have point four one three, because it doesn't change it. Okay, so that's what that one becomes. How about 29? Good there or not? Good. That one was kind of the base Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's an easy one. Number 30. Help. Help. Yes, number 30. Yeah. Number 30. The Chandlers are moving across country. Mr. Chandler leaves 3.5 hours before Mrs. Chandler. So this is a distance. Distance equals rate times time. So he's traveling. He leaves 3.5 hours before. So it's x plus 3.5. Okay. When does she leave? She leaves at X, right? Because yeah. he's leaving beyond her. He drives at, it says his average speed is 45 miles per hour. How fast does she go? She's driving at 70. And it says how long will it take till Mrs. Chandler overtakes Mr. Chandler? So I need to set these two equal to each other. So 45 times X plus 3.5 is equal to 70X. So 45x, 45 times 3.5 equals 157.5. What was that? 45 times x and 45 times 3.5 hours. Uh, minus 45x. And that's equal to 35x. Divide by 35. 175.5 divided by 35. Wait, I'm confused. What? You're confused. Uh, Where did I lose you? Uh, <laughs> I thought it would have been uh, 157.5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's 157. Right. Sure. Yeah, I goofed. Okay, 157.5 divided by 35 equals 4.5 hours. So it will take her 4.5 hours to overtake him if she drives 70 miles an hour. Okay. All right. 31. The price of a cake is 12%. The price of a cake plus 12% delivery charge comes to a total cost of $20.16. What is the price of the cake? So first I need to um, describe what's going on up there. So what ended up taking place? And using a greater than or a less than I think is what we have in there. <clears throat> oh, maybe not. Um, so 12%, so it's the cost of the cake plus 0 0.12 of the cake is going to equal $20.16. So that would be my value up there. So 1 plus 0.12 is 1.12x is equal to 20.16. So take that, divide it by that, 20.16 divided by 1.12. And you get that the cake costs $18.
was the cost of the gig. Okay. 32. 32 is that extra sheet. Remember that sheet? I gave you a sheet that had all these questions on it. Mm -hmm. You need that sheet for this part. Okay. Right. You never got that one? No. Uh, I think I might have one. I think I was gone that day. You may have been. <coughs> I forgot where I have it at in here. There it is. Anybody else need that sheet? I do. I do. You need that sheet? No. All right, so that sheet has got all the questions in here that go along with the um, written out words and stuff. So if we look at number 32, for instance, 32 was a negative 2z minus 3 is less than or equal to 9, is what that one happens to be. So how do I solve it? So solve the linear inequality above and give for the given variable. Simplify it. So if I solve it, what will I have happen here? So I have negative 2z minus 3 is greater than or equal to 9. Yep, yeah, add 3. Equals 12. This way. Plus 3. Switch the sign. Yep, yeah, switch the sign in there. Equals a negative 6. We all agree? Yes. So then it says graph it on the number line. So if I graph that on the number line, what would I do? Well, I would be at a negative 6. But it's bracket. And it's going to go this way. Yep. And it's going to head out to infinity, right? Yes. Okay. Good deal. So that's the graphing part. Now on your test it's, or your exam, it will ask you to solve this and to do a graphing. There's one that has a number line in it, so you got to be careful and make sure you get your number line going the right way. Number 33. Good. We good with 33? Kind of like the last one. Yep. Okay there? Good. Yes or no? Okay, that one's all right. Okay. 34. Okay. 34 is 2, parenthesis, 2x plus 2, less than 2x plus 16. So if I work this one out, I need to first distribute 2 times 2x is 4x, 2 times 2 is plus 4, minus 2x, minus 4, and do those all together so I can save some room here. I get 2x is less than, um, 4 from 16 is 12. Divide by 2, and we find x needs to be less than 6. So that 6 is right here, so I need a parenthesis this time. Why a parenthesis? Because there's no equals to Right, and then it's going to go that way. Two. Yeah. Okay. If you, I, what I always think about is a bracket is like hitting a brick wall. If you hit a brick wall, it stops and that's when an equals is involved. So you hit that brick wall. A parenthesis is kind of looped and it doesn't have an ending. It kind of just keeps going. Or not keeps going, but it's not included. It's kind of a softer softer hit than a bracket. If you want to think of it that way too. Okay, so that's that one. 35, how about that one? Can you do that one on your own? 36. 36, okay. 35, all right, so 35 is a negative 10, is less than 2z plus 4, is less than 18. That one's got um, a triple piece to it. So on 35, yeah, I have a negative 10 is less than 2z plus 4 is less than 18. So because I've got stuff on each side, I need to, to, when I subtract 4, I need to do it to every side that's in there. Alright, so if I do it to those sides, negative 10, negative 4 is negative 14. 18 minus 4 is 14. Then finally divide by 2. 
and I find a negative 7 is less than z is less than 7. But in order to put that on my number line with 35, I need to break it apart into two pieces. This is open towards z, so z needs to be greater than a negative 7. At the same time, z needs to be less than 7. So you need both of those in there. So if I put um, the negative 7 is here, it's going to be a parenthesis, and that line is going to go this way. The other line is at 7, and it's also a parenthesis, and it's going to go this way. Well, My answer's in here. Right. What was that? You don't do an infinity. It's just between nope. 7 and negative mm -hmm. 7. Yep. It's just, yeah, mm -hmm. 7. Yep, it's just between 7 and negative 7 and 7. Mm -hmm. So what if that sign had the greater than or less than the line of it? Oh, if I had, if I had a line under here? Then it would be a bracket. Then it would be a bracket? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. 36. Um, 36 is basically the same, but 36 is a negative 3 is less than 3 divided by 2. Whoops, x is up there. Plus 3 is less than zero. So it's a negative three less than three halves x plus three is less than zero. So then I'm going to minus three. So I get a negative six is less than three halves x is less than a negative three. Multiply everybody by two. Two times a negative six is a negative twelve. 2 times this leaves me 3x. 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6. Then divide everybody by 3. So a negative 4x is less than a negative 2. Yeah. Okay. And so there's no equals. So when I graph this, I need to reverse it. So x is greater than a negative 4, or x is less than a negative 2. And so if I stick it on my number line, whoops, what? On the, um, when I went to go and check it, it had brackets. I thought that it would have had, um, I may have left it. off my equals in the problem. When 36, when I typed it, I may have left off the equals, and that's the only oh, thing that changed it. Then it, it. would have been brackets. Then okay. it would have been, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yep. But as it stands, I would be in a negative 4, parenthesis, heading this direction negative 2 heading the opposite direction with a parenthesis so my answer is in between them so that would be my value that I would have okay and yes okay so why is it I just why is it parentheses in brackets like that is it because it doesn't say or equals because it doesn't have an equals right here okay if this had an equal line underneath it then I would use brackets okay okay Yep, but it doesn't, so I can't use brackets with that one. And then 37, that's still one that's missing, but in 37, we have an absolute 2y plus 3, absolute minus 3 is equal to 0. So you just get rid of the 3. So I'm going to move the 3 over, so I'm going to add 3. So I better get some paper here because I know I won't put that one in there. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Gives me the absolute of 2y plus 3 is equal to 3. Now because it's absolutes, what could come out of here? We can have a positive 3 come out of there because the absolute of a positive 3 is still 3, or it could be a negative, negative 3. So 2y plus 3 equals 3, or 2y plus 3 equals a negative 3. And you solve it both ways, so you need both answers. So minus 3, I have 2y equals 0, divide by 2, so y equals 0. Over here, minus 3. Gives me 2y equals a negative 6. Divide by 2. So y equals a negative 3. 
Mm -hmm. So that becomes my two answers. Okay. So that's the two answers that I would have with that. Okay. I think you can do um, 38. Yeah. 38 is the same. Now 39 changes. Because in 39 we have the absolute of x plus 2 minus 2 is less than 0. Becomes an inequality with that one. And because it's an inequality, I need to add 2 to both sides. <laughs> but with this one, I need to... When I remove this, x plus 2 is going to be less than 2, but it's going to be greater than a negative 2. So you kind of got to do both ends with this one. So then when I minus 2 from all sides, I find a negative 4 is less than x, and x is less than 0. And so my two answers are really x is greater than a negative 4, and x is less than 0 to make that one true. And so then I think they ask you to put on your number line here. That was 39. It says graph the set on the number line. So here's a negative 4. So I want to go this way from a negative 4 with a print to C. And I want to go from 0 back the other way with a print to C. Okay. So my answer's in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then number 40 is the other one. Um, and what happens with 40? What would I have to do? 40 is 2 absolute y minus 2 absolute minus 8 is greater than 0. So if I work this one out, I would first move my 8 over. So now I have 2 absolute y minus 2 is greater than 8. Then to get the 2 out of the front, divide by 2. Then when I set this one up, it's y minus 2 greater than 4, but it also will be less than a negative 4 when I do both sides. So then what happens? I'm going to add 2 to everybody. And I find a negative 2 is greater than y, and at the same time is greater than 6. But when you split this one apart, I have y is less than a negative 2, and y is greater than 6. So when I graph it on my sheet, negative 2 is going to go this direction with a parenthesis, and 6 is going to go that direction with a parenthesis. So it's split with that one. So you got to go in both directions. So it can go either way with those. Okay? okay. I was trying to, I think when I did that one, I had got the right numbers, but I didn't have them going that way. I thought that they were uh, like uh, <coughs> one on both going the same way. Yeah. Oh, well, not yeah. Not the same way, but I thought that for some reason I was thinking that it was in between them. Way, they were it going was like inwards. Yeah. No, it's they're going outward. Okay. Whenever you got a greater than, they're always going to go the opposite way of each other. Oh. Okay. When you have a less than, that's when they will cross. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, chapter four. Chapter four was graphing. And um, this first one is missing its equation, and it happens to be y equals a negative one-half x plus four is what that one happens to be. And so um, how would I graph it? Now, you have whatever way you want to graph on the test itself or the exam itself. So the easiest way to graph something is to use your slope, or not your slope, but your intercept and your slope. Because if I graph this way, that means I'm going to go up and find 4, go up 4. 
and then I'm going to use my slope which says go down one and over two to get my two points that I can end up graphing. And if I graph that and connect these points, I'm going to draw a line in between them. And my line's going to do one of those numbers. So that's what it looks like. If it asks you to plot two points, your easiest is put zero in for y or x and put zero in for y and find your intercepts and where those two points happen to cross at. That's the easiest way of finding points. So if I put zero in here, I have y is equal to four, which is where I'm at. If I put zero in for y, I got a little more math there to do. I'm gonna move my four over. So I get negative four is equal to a negative one half x. So times everything by negative two, both sides. And I get a negative eight. So when I'm at a negative eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'm out there. Oh, positive eight, yep, yep, yep. Negative times a negative is a positive. Yeah, no, it's a negative times a negative makes it a positive. So, <laughs> yeah, positive eight would be what you get, okay? So you've got different ways of doing those, but the easiest, again, is graph with your slope and your intercept um, that you happen to have. Okay, on to 42. This, for some reason, is crooked. There we go. Now I got it straight. Now it's out of focus. Okay. So if I graph this next one, first it says, what's the slope? Do I have a slope? What's my slope with that one? Three fifths. Mm -hmm. What's my y-intercept? Negative 2, 0, negative 2. Mm -hmm. And if I graph it, so I graph the y-intercept, so 0, negative 2 on the first graph. And the second graph, it says graph the slope. So I'm just going to graph it up here. Um, my slope is rise 3 and run 5. And if I connect those two, I will have my graph of what it should be. Straightforward, good stuff, right? You can do those? Okay. Then 43. 43 asks me what my slope is and what my y-intercept. Can I find it with what I've got right here? No, you need to put y equals 4. Yeah, need to get it in y equals 4. So 3x minus 3y equals 6. Move my 3x over. Negative 3y equals a negative 3x plus 6. Divide by negative 3. And I find y is equal to a negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 6 divided by negative 3 is a negative 2. And so I find my equation to be y equals x minus 2. What's my slope? 1x. 1 slope over 1. one. Mm -hmm. And what's my intercept? Negative 2 is yep. negative 2. Yep. And then I think the next page will probably ask you to graph it. So if we graph it, we're at a negative 2. Slope says rise 1 and run 1. And connect the two dots. And I have my graph. Whoops, I get it down there where you can see. So that's my graph. Okay. We good with that, you think? Yeah. I think so. 44 says find the, s the slope with given two points. What do I got to do with that one? It doesn't really, but the equation itself is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. They're backwards. It's just meaning that you have two points, but it doesn't make any difference um, with that. So then I just plug in my points and solve it. You good with that? Okay. What about number 45? Do that one. Do that one? Okay. 45's got fractions in it, so that's why we need to take a look at that one. So if I follow my pattern, one quarter over one quarter minus minus two over a negative five halves. So now I need to do my math in the top. So two into quarters is eight quarters. One quarter minus eight quarters is a negative 
seven quarters. We all agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bottom, change my sign, so it's going to be a plus because the subtraction changes the addition, the sign on the five halves changes. So my common denominator is eight. Four goes into eight twice, two times one is two. Two goes into eight four, four times five is twenty. So I get twenty-two eighths on the bottom. What's this bar mean? Does that piece right there mean? Divide. Divide? Mm hmm So negative seven fourths divided by this. So what do I have to do if I'm dividing? Flip. Yep. Flip it and put eight over twenty-two. And cancel. Eight and the four cancel. The two and the twenty-two cancel. So I'm left with a negative seven over eleven would be my answer. So that's my slope with um, those fractions in there. Okay. Right. Um, find an equation of a line. Um, the slope intercept form of a line with the given slope that passes through the point with the given coordinates. So in this one, I need my, my point slope formula. Do I know what that is? What's my point slope formula? Y minus Y1 uh -huh. equals X, MX times X minus X1. Perfect. Yep. So plug them in. So I'm going to put y in where y1's at. So y minus 3 is equal to slope negative 2 times x minus a negative 1. So I have y minus 3 is equal to a negative 2x. This changes. Subtraction to addition, the negative changes. So negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. We OK or not OK? Yeah. OK. And then um, add 3. Can I find y is equal to a negative 2x? And if I add these together, I get a plus 1. So that becomes my equation. Um, you're just going through and working out your pieces in there and uh, putting them in place. OK? And then number 47 says we got two points. So we need to find the equation of a line passing through those points. So I need to find my slope. So negative 2 over negative 3 minus negative 4 over 1. Negative 2 minus a negative 4 is really negative 2 plus 4 or 2. Negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. So I have a negative 1 half, okay, for my slope. Pick a point. Now they all got negatives in them, but this one has the least amount, so I'm going to use that one. So y minus a negative 4. My slope goes in in my equation. And x minus 1. <clears throat> so I have y plus 4 is equal to a negative 1 half plus 1. Negative 1 half x plus 1 half. <clears throat> Move my 4 over. So I have y on the left. But I can't work with that 4 like that, can I? What's the 4 got to become? A negative 4. Nope, it's already over there. Oh, oh. But I got to add it to that half. Oh. So it needs to become a negative 8 halves. <coughs> 1 from a negative 8 is a negative 7. Um, so I have y minus 1 half x minus 7 halves. So y equals a negative one half x minus seven halves would be my answer to that one. Okay, not bad. Um, Can we do forty-eight? I guess yeah, forty-eight. Forty-eight is graphing, and we got a um, first on forty-eight. In order to graph it, I need to get um, y by itself. So I'm going to minus 12 from both sides. So I get 2y is less than or equal to negative 12 minus 3x. Divide by 2. So I find y is less than or equal to negative 3 halves x minus 6. Okay. Got that part. Okay. Now I want to graph this. And because there's an equals, what do I know about my line when I graph it? Solid line, okay. 
So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to um, graph a negative 6, which is there. Slope says go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 2. And I want a solid line once I graph it. But I'm not finished because of the inequality. i got to decide what side gets shaded. So if I use my test point of 0, 0, put 0 in here, 0 times 3 halves is 0. 0 is a for y. 0 is greater than a negative 6, or less than a negative 6. Is that true? Is 0 less than a negative 6? Nope. So that's false on this side. So my shaded side is over here. So that's the piece that gets shaded. So I want to shade that side. Okay. Yeah. I forgot the zero zero. Ah, that would do it. So then, if we do the next one, I'm going to add five to both sides. So I have x plus five is greater than or equal to a negative five y. This one's a little tricky because when I divide by negative five, what do I have to do? Flip who? Inequality, right? Yeah. So I have x minus 1 is less than or equal to y, because I flipped it. <clears throat> oh, this has got to go over 1 over negative 5. going to get my 1 fifth in there. So that kind of looks weird, so I'm going to reverse it. y is greater than or equal to um, a negative 1 fifth x minus 1. Okay, now I can graph it. So I'm at a negative 1. Slope says down 1 and run 5. Connect the 2. And now I need to shade. So what side do I shade? What was it? The way this is pointing? Yeah. But how does that help me in here, though? Because since it's pointing that way, you're going to shade above the line. Above the line. Yeah. Okay. But what if my line is going this way? Then you shade below the line because it's negative. Sure? Yes. Okay. Let's see if it works. Here's 0, 0. So 0 is greater than or equal to 0 times 1, negative 1 fifth of 0. Is 0 greater than a negative 1? Yes. Okay. So we got the right side shaded. And I'm going to leave 50 for you because I think you can do that. Right? Yeah. Okay. So that gets us through every piece in here. Now, we went over 5 and 6 last time, but let's go back through and see if you had any questions on anything in, in Chapter 5. Anything in Chapter 5 that we need to go back through? Uh, hold on. I think you want to do 56 again. 56. Okay. Uh -huh. So 56 is parenthesis 2x to the third y to the negative half, or negative 2, all over y squared raised to the third power. So if we do 56, I got to see if I can take care of anything inside of here. So before, I can leave x third, 2 up top, x to the third up top, y squared is going to go to the bottom, right? With the y squared down there. Mm -hmm. Combine them in the bottom, so I have 2x cubed on top and y to the fourth, then everything gets a 3. So 2 gets cubed, the x cubed gets cubed, which is, becomes 9, the y to the fourth gets cubed and becomes y to the twelfth, and then all I need to do is multiply out my 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, x to the ninth over y to the twelfth. Okay. So get your stuff combined in there together first. So make sure you get stuff put together um, that you need in there. Okay. Wait, hold on a sec. You times the 2 by 3, right? Or do you cube the 2? This 2 has a 1 on it. So then it's 3 times 1, 3 times 3, 3 times 4. Because this 3 means I want to see this thing 3 times. What was that? 2 gets 2. Yes. 
That's where I get 8 from. Mm -hmm. okay. 2 times that's 2 is 4 nine. times 2 is 8. That's why. That's why. Yep, it should be an 8. Mm -hmm. Anything else in Chapter 5? Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me see here. Um, 65 and 66. Okay. 65 is a division. All right. 65 is a division. So I have m cubed plus 2m minus 3. But because I don't have a square, I need a square. Plus 0m squared plus 2m minus 3. And that gets divided by m minus 1. Okay? So then I ask myself, what do I got to do to m to make it look like an m cubed? So that'd be m squared. Yep. I got that one. Then m squared times m. m mm-hmm. M squared times a negative one? Negative one m. M what? Squared. Negative m squared. Oh, yeah. Because you get m squared times a negative one. Okay. Now I gotta go through and do what? Change my signs. So the m cubes are gone. The 0m squared plus an m squared is just an m squared. Bring down my 2m and do my multiplication. So what do I got? What do I got to do to m to make it look like an m squared? One. I need an m. Mm -hmm. m times m is m squared. m times a negative 1 is a negative m. Change my signs. Negative and a plus. 2m plus m is 3m minus 3. Bring that down. The m squareds are gone. So then m and 3m. What do I got to do to m to make it look like a 3m? Times it by 3. Yes. 3 times m is 3m. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And then what happens? Signs change and everybody is gone. So my answer comes out to be m squared plus m plus 3. You have one like that on your exam, okay? Just one. Just one. Mm -hmm. just one. Okay. Yep, just one division. <laughs> and then you said 66. So yeah. So let's see I, if we can pack I 66. I really don't have to do it now because I was just I, I had gotten so far into the problem and then I like my brain went blank. Like, what was the next step? I don't know okay. what to do. You know? Okay. I can do it if you want. You want yeah, it? Let's just okay. Go ahead and do it this so way. nine x squared minus three x plus twelve. That's all divided by 3x minus 1. So what do I got to do? I don't have any missing things, so I didn't add anything. So what do I got to do to 3x to make it look like a 9x squared? Times it by 3x. Yep. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times a negative 1 is a negative 3x. Okay. Then I need to go through and change my signs. And when I change my signs, everything there disappears, and all I have left is a plus 12. That becomes my remainder. So then I put 12 over 3x minus 1, because I can't do anything That's else with it. That's what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. I was going through, and I kept figuring, I forgot to do the parentheses minus when I got yeah. done with it. Yep. And I was trying to figure out why. I'm, I'm close, but, you know, I'm not. Yep, that's why. It's because you, because they all disappear right here. Right. So that goes away. And it stops at 12 because... Uh, get rid of 12 because we have an X. Right. Yep. And it's yep. the 3X minus 1 because that was what the original thing That's was. That's what your divisor was. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got okay. It. So All right. One of these on our exam. You got one of them on your exam. How many of those graphing ones are on the exam? The graphing ones? I think did. there's um, two. One, two, three, four. There's four of them. Four graphs. Yep. How many questions did you say this was like? 45. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Chapter 6. Anything there? Thing in 6 that we did that you still. 5 and 6. Is there a lot of 5 and 6? Chapter 5 and 6. Is there a lot of those? 5 and each one. Remember those the most. I know. Well, they're the ones you just did. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything in 6? 77. 77. It says one positive number is three more than twice another. One positive number is three more than twice another. So one positive number is three more 
then twice another. So I've got x and I've got 3x plus 3. If their product is 1,430, find the numbers. So I'm going to take x times 2x plus 3 is going to equal 1,430. So x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 3 is plus 3x equals 1430. Minus 1430 from both sides gives me 2x squared plus 3x minus 1430 is equal to 0. So now I need to come up with factors that will give me positive 3 in the middle. It's a negative on the end, so 1's negative, 1's positive. So 2 times 1430 is 2860. Negative. So it multiplies to give me that, but it adds to give me 3x. So again, handy dandy calculator. Start dividing. 2860 divided by 40. We'll just try that one. It's not good. It's going to be 2860 divided by 50. It's 57.2. That's not it either. We're getting closer. Um, 2860 divided by 55 gives me 52. 55 minus 52, is that what I need? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 55 is going to be positive. 55x minus 52x. Substitute for the middle, so I'm going to put um, plus 2x squared in front, and I'm going to put a minus 1430 on the end. Group in twos. <clears throat> I can take out an x out of the first one. Leaves me with x or 2x plus 55. And in the second one, I can take out a negative 52. Leaves me with x plus 55. So I have 2x plus 55 times x minus 52. And so set each of those equal to 0. So 2x plus 55 equals 0, and x minus 52 equals 0. And so minus 55, I get 2x equals a negative 55, divide by 2. x is a negative 55 over 2. And the other one, add 52. Okay? But if I go back to my problem, it says positive numbers, so I can't use that negative value. So my two answers are 52, and 2 times 52 is 104, plus, that plus 3 is 107. So my answers are 52 and 107. Okay. Okay. Well, 77 and 56 is 26 and 55. 26 and 55. Yeah, that's what the answer says. And I got... It does? I got the 26, but I didn't get 55. I got 55 over 2. That's how I was all confused. But apparently the 26 is not great either. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to have to go back and look at the other ones. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because I had the... Oh, because I can't do the it that way. Yeah, I can't do it that way. Because I don't match up the numbers. Oh, because I can't do it that way, can I? Because they don't match. So i got to reverse them. 2x squared minus 52x plus 55x minus 1430. Yeah, I did that wrong, didn't I? This one, I can take out a 2x. These are with x minus 26. Why am I not coming out with what I need here? Wouldn't it be plus 20 or plus 52? No, because I need a plus 3 in the middle. Let me reread here. Positive number is 3 more than twice another. 3 more than twice another. x times 2x, x times 3. Move that over. 2 times that is that. Yeah. Something's not right in there, is it? I wouldn't worry about that problem. Alright, Yep. I'll have to take another look at it and see what happened to it. Because it's not factoring right.
They said I got the 26, but I yeah. got 55 over 2. That's why I'm like, what's this? That one we can't use. But I can't get out of the second piece here. I can take out a 55, but I'm not going to get a 26. Maybe I will. 1, 4, 3, 0, divided by 55. <laughs> eh. 1, 4, 3, 0, divided by 55. Yes, I do get it to work out because I can take out a plus 55 out of there and that leaves me with x minus 26. So now they both match. So 2x plus 55 times x minus 26 equals 0. Set them both equal to 0. No, I won't. This one I will because I'll have 2x equals a negative 55 divided by 2, but it tells me in there that I can't use... I can't use the negative because it says positive. But it says positive. Two. Right, but the 2 is positive. But the 55 is now negative when I move it over. It's a negative 55 divided by 2, okay, which so remains it's negative. Negative. It's negative. It's going to be negative. negative. So I'll have x equals. No, no, no. It's 2 divided into 55. So it's still 55 over 2, but it's a negative right. because it's a negative 5. This x minus 26 is equal to 0. I think it's wrong. Look on the answer machine. Look on the answer key, Marcel. Okay. It's 26 and 55. Yes. But I have to go back up here. I have to go back up here because this is 26. The x is 26. Then 2 times 26 is... 52, 52 plus 3 is 55. That's where they get the 26 and the 55 from. Because you've got to go back up and calculate it out for both answers. Yeah, because yeah. down here, when I get 2x plus 55, that gives me a negative number, so I can't use this at all. I can only use x equals 26. There's no one on the test like No, no. And so x up here equals 26. And 2 times 26 is 52, plus 3 is the 55. So you do get the 55. All right, anything else in Chapter 6? No? Um, I, just, I don't get these. Like 81, I don't get 82. I mean, I, it's so bad. Like that section, I, the I haven't length, been able to certify it. The I length of a rectangle, the length of a rectangle is nine more than the width. Okay? The width is just the width because that's going to be what its standard is. The area of a rectangle is length times width. Mm -hmm. So if I put in the area, which is 136, the length is 9 plus W, because that's what they told me, times W. So 136, 9 times w is 9w, w times w is w squared, move my 136 over, I get 0 is equal to w squared plus 9w minus 136. And then I need to factor this. It's going to be a minus and a plus. The plus is going to be the bigger value. So I need factors of 136 that's going to give me 9 in the middle. And you just got to start trying. And until you come up with 9 in your middle, and I've got, don't have it yet, 136 divided by 9. One thirty six divided by eight. Yeah, um, eight, yes. So seventeen is positive and eight is negative. And set each of these equal to zero. And I find out that W could be eight or W could be in minus seventeen, but because it's length, I can't use a negative seventeen, so that gets canceled out. And so what are my two measurements? Nine plus eight is 17 and 
Um, eight happens to be what my width happens to be for this one. So my two answers, length and width, are 17 and 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that one. And 82 is the theater one. Um, if you have a theater, it's got rows going this way and seats in those rows. It says the number of rows is 4 less than the number of seats. Seats plus 4, or minus 4, is what my row is, and seats are just S. And since it's length times width that gives me my number of seats, um, I have 672 is equal to the seats times the rows. And so I get 672 is equal to S squared minus um, 4S. Move my 672 over. And I get 0 is equal to S squared minus 4S minus 672. And if I take that and factor it, same as I did before, one's going to be negative, one's going to be plus, but the negative needs to be bigger. So 672 divided by, what was it? 672 divided by 24 is 28. Yep, that's what we need. So I need a negative 28 and a positive 24. So S could be 28 and S could be a negative 24 can't use a negative 24 and so my rows are 28 minus 4 or 24 my seats are 28 and it asks me for how many rows um, how many rows of seats are there so there's 24 rows okay. which you have okay anything else now we're down to chapter 7 which was the proportions I think you're all okay with that part yes are we good yeah. okay now if you have any last-minute questions next time around, um, we can take a look at that. I did want to show you the exam sheet one more time here so that you have that thing in line of what your answers. Order of operations is that chapter one. Chapter one stuff. This is also chapter one stuff. And probably some of chapter two in here. Your solving equations is chapter two. That's all that stuff in there. Applications is all story problems. So there's five of those kinds of things. Some of them might not be bad. Okay. Graphing is chapter four. Yes. Yes, it should be pretty much similar to the stuff you have in there. Not as many quest not as many broken out steps. You should be good. You should be good. Now you have to flip the page. <laughs> Chapter 5 is exponents. Chapter 5 is polynomials. Chapter 6 is factoring. And Chapter 3 is inequalities. Okay? So that's where it all lines up at. No. No, but it's still, you should be able to recognize them of what you got. I think you will. What was that? I first started doing it, I was like, I don't remember how I did these.